أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the next verse, Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Again, O you who believe, which means what, what, what follows is a requirement of faith. اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إث ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب الرحيم الله says in verse number 12 O you who believe Avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicion is a sin. And do not spy or backbite each other. Would, would any of you like to eat the flesh of his brother when dead? You would detest it and be, con and, and be conscious and be conscious of Allah, for God is the acceptor of repentance and the most merciful. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ujtanibu kathiran min al-dhan. O you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Don't be suspicious of each other. And this is a very powerful verse, because in an Islamic society, a Muslim has a right to feel safe from harm. They have a right to feel safe from physical harm, from verbal harm. And here, Allah is even taking it a step further. That a believer has a right that you should not assume negatively of them. This is a right that other mu'mineen have over us that we shouldn't be suspicious of them. We should have a positive opinion of each other. And believe me, I don't think there's any religion that mentions this as a right. That in secular societies, you know, yeah, no one, no one is allowed to physically harm you. But you're allowed to insult people to a certain extent. But even if you say, okay, we live in a society where you're not allowed to verbally harm people you cannot insult people is there any society that teaches that you should not even be suspicious of one another that you should have whenever you can have a positive opinion of each other do not engage in negative thoughts you know sometimes you know sometimes we get these negative thoughts suspicions come to our minds in the form of thoughts but we shouldn't engage those thoughts. In the beginning, it's difficult. Sometimes we don't have control over what comes to our minds. But we need to start visualizing these negative thoughts as vehicles that are passing on the highway of our minds. If it's a negative thought, if it's a thought that is a suspicious thought about another person, another believer, let it, let it drive by. Don't get in that car. Don't get in that vehicle. Just let it, let it go by. And then gradually, if you train yourself not to focus on those negative thoughts, not to engage in them, eventually you'll become a person that will naturally think positively about everybody. That you, you'll, you'll, It will be second nature to you to give people the benefit of the doubt. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إثم. Because you don't have the evidence, you know. Don't act on your suspicions. Don't try to. Don't have negative opinions of people. Try to see the good in people. Try to have a positive view. ولا تجسسوا and do not do not spy on people, especially today, brothers and sisters. Social media has made it very easy for us to spy and investigate into the private lives of people. You know? Curiosity is a good thing, but Allah wants us to be intellectually curious. 
You know, curiosity is supposed to motivate you to discover reality, to discover the truth, to to become, to be, to gain ma'rif of Allah, to educate yourself. But unfortunately, some of us we're curious about what people do in their homes. We're curious about what people do in their private lives. We're curious about what people, where people go on vacation, how much people make, how they afford the things that they have. This is a sickness, especially in our time. And as I said, you know, social media has made it very easy for us. You know, some of us, that's all we do. Social media has become a tool for nosy people. We just want to know what other people are eating, what they're doing, where they're going, where they're shopping, what new clothes they're wearing. This is this is a, this is very damaging to our spirituality, brothers and sisters. And we need to develop intellectual curiosity. You should be curious about how the Prophet lived his life. You should be curious about you know theological questions. You should be curious, curious about fiqhi questions, about nature, about, you know, developing yourself. It's none, of, it's none of our business, you know. And this, if we just focus on this, getting rid of this culture of suspicion and nosiness, you know, a lot of, a lot of the gossip is generated because of this unhealthy curiosity. We like to peer into people's lives you know there's a uh, a narration that you know during the time of umar ibn al-khattab when umar ibn al-khattab was the khalifa it seems that he had a habit he used to patrol the streets he used to walk around and kind of see if everybody's behaving and the the narration says that he he was passing through a neighborhood and he heard this guy singing in his house. So he became suspicious, right? So he jumped over the wall. This is not this is mentioned in Sunni books of Hadith. It says Omar he jumped over the wall, the fence. So the guy, can you imagine the guy sitting in his courtyard or in his porch, whatever it was? And suddenly the Khalifa is in. He jumped the fence. The man, the reason why he was singing is because he was drunk. <laughs> he was drinking alcohol. So Omar sees him drinking and he says, you're drinking alcohol, don't you? This is haram, what are you doing? But this, this drunk guy, wallahi, he gave him a very good answer. He said to him, he said to Omar, in akun fi wahida." He says to Omar that, listen, if I committed one sin, I'm drinking, I admit. I'm doing it in the privacy of my house. If I committed one sin, you committed three. How did Omar commit three sins? The man says, Allah says in the Quran. So this guy, he, he drinks Quran, but he seems to know the Quran very well. He drinks alcohol, but he seems to know the Quran very well. He says to Umar, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Don't spy on people. And you spy on me. وَقَدْ تَجَسَّسْتْ So this is the first sin that you committed. You spied on me. I wasn't doing this out in public. I was in my home. So you heard me singing and you became suspicious. And Allah also says in the Quran, وَلَيْسَ الْبِرْ وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ بِأَنْ تَأْتُوا الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا Allah says in the Quran, and it is not righteous, it is not good to enter homes from the back doors, meaning to come in a way where you're not welcomed. وَقَدْ تَسَوَّرْتَ عَلَيْهِ وَدَّخَلْتَ عَلَيَّ مِنْ غَهْرِ الْبَيْتِ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ And you, O oh Umar, so you were suspicious of me, and you jumped the fence, you came, you didn't come through the front door. You entered my house without permission. And number three, Allah says in the Quran, لَا تَدْخُلُوا بُيُوتًا غَيْرَ بُيُوتِكُمْ حَتَّى تَسْتَأْنِسُوا وَتُسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا Do not enter 
any house other than your own house until you're given permission and until you say salam salam and you entered without saying salam and the narration says Omar said that you're right and he left I don't know if this is a fadila or not so you see that Allah says do not be suspicious of one another do not spy on one another don't be nosy mu'mineen are not supposed to be nosy people and then number three Allah says wala yartab ba'dukum ba'dha do not backbite one another Now, I think I'm going to have to leave uh, this last part of the verse uh, for our next session as we're coming to a close. There's a lot to discuss with this uh, this uh, this part of the verse on the read, but we'll conclude here. And inshallah, we'll continue our discussion uh, next week. Alhamdulillah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, he gives us the ability to to act on these verses you know if i were to choose two verses in the quran where i think they're the most neglected verses it would probably be the two verses that we spoke about today i think that there are so many people who who are religious in the ritualistic sense but it's you don't really find very many people who who avoid ridiculing who avoid the name calling who are not suspicious who don't backbite I think in, this is the real definition of of spirituality and religiosity. And we pray that Allah makes us one of them. So <clears throat> when Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu chtanibu kathiran min allan, right? Avoid much suspicion. Now, there are certain cases where suspicion is justified, right? You have you have evidence that 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 raises uh questions but if it's just hearsay see there, there's 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 a distinction that we have to make here there's nothing wrong with being see there's a difference between precaution and suspicion right so for example someone comes to ask for your daughter's hand and you hear things about this suitor now you as a responsible God-fearing father, you're not going to just say that, no, 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 it's okay. I have to have a good opinion. I'm going to ignore the hearsay. No, you have to investigate. This means that you have, to, you have to investigate from a place of precaution, meaning that you have to be objective, that so far this person is innocent, and I'm going to look into the matter, and if, if it's true, it's true. If it's false, then it's false. Ihtiyat is different from uh, suspicion because with ihtiyat you begin with an objective mindset whereas with suspicion you begin investigating with a negative attitude so the difference between someone who investigates so for example if if someone asks for my daughter's hand and i want to be precautious i objectively look into the the you know the information but if i'm suspicious it means that i already have a negative opinion and i am investigating from that place meaning i'm I, i'm not i'm not objective I'm starting the investigation from a place of bias. So when the Quran says, avoid much suspicion, most of the time, the suspicion is, is not sanctioned, meaning it's not warranted. It's not based on actual fact. But there are some instances where no, there are some some cases where it's it's actually true right that your suspicion is actually it's actually uh it's actually accurate so yeah avoid much suspicion because 
a lot of the things that we're suspicious about have no reality, meaning that they're, it's not based on fact. You're going to get it wrong. Sometimes you'll get it right. That's why it says much of it, because there are certain cases where your, your suspicion was, was valid. Some suspicion is is sin, especially if it's if it's not based on anything, and you're and that suspicion is affecting the way that you're you're behaving and you're interacting. So it go all goes back to this idea of you should have a positive opinion of people, and you should give them the benefit of the doubt. And people are innocent until you can unequivocally prove that they are guilty. And even if they are guilty, you shouldn't go and publicize it, right? You share it with those who need to know that information because, for example, it's an issue of marriage or, or whatnot. Because a lot of suspicion, it's not based on fact. It's based on hearsay and it's not, it's not information that can be verified.